What and what is it like now to sign and officially become part of this Razorback family? It's it's great. Just um just making it official, getting the weight off my shoulders, and uh just I've been, I've been getting welcomed down by the by the community very well. So. Um, now, great. of course, you are from Little Rock, and you grew up watching the Razorbacks. But just tell us, what was it about the recruiting process that made you ultimately decide to come here? Definitely just you guys, Coach Coach Musselman, just the way he was recruiting. a lot. I liked a lot of stuff he was talking about, just his demeanor, his um, his approach to the game. And I and I just um, – I, I know a lot of players just up there, and I was um, very familiar with the system. Just grew up watching the Razorbacks and everything, so – it was an easy decision when it comes to that. When it comes to stuff like that, I got. I, I do want to talk with uh, with with everybody that's listening and, and Moses. You know, it was really unique. It's the first time that I've ever experienced this. Is you know, we were not allowed to send out the paperwork um, for Moses to sign until twelve oh one on Wednesday, and he and his family wanted to read the entire NLI, and then Moses asked us questions about that, what we call it kind of like a contract or his uh, national letter of intent. And so I I just want the fans to understand, like, what a serious-minded person, young man that we're getting, that he actually read the thing, wanted to do it alone, wanted to answer questions. It shows the maturity. Moses, I don't know if you want to – kind of enlighten us with a little bit more than maybe what I've shared about that. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, that's what it is, it's the contract. So I just wanted to read over the document and see what I was signing. It's such a big, such a big step. It's um, a big move. So I just wanted to be a hundred percent sure about certain things. That's why I had a couple of questions and things I didn't understand. Cause you know, it's a lot of terminology and everything. I didn't really, I wasn't used to. So I had to clarify with the coaching staff and we just got out that, got that out the way. And then I, I signed the paper. Very well, mature. I it, think. Is, it is. Well, it's awesome. And it's all, you know, like our fans, you know, soon as signing day, they're like, when's Moses signing? When's Moses signing? And what they don't know is what goes on behind closed doors and all the conversations that we have with you and your family. And just the thoroughness is really refreshing. I mean, I was glad um, that it took an extra two days because you now learned a lot more about the process and about what that contract or that NLI is. And so I just, to me, it's, I know you're going to read your scouting report like that too. So I'm pumped up and excited. He's a businessman. He's a businessman. We've got so many great questions coming in, but um, one thing that I personally want to know here, you were playing for a team that was undefeated consensus number one, and then you had your season cut short. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, that was definitely, it was, it was a, it was a bit of a letdown. Uh, it's just having the season that we had. We all sacrificed a lot. We all it was it was a great season. We off the court, on the court with so much success. And then just having it having the championship our end goal right there so close and then not being able to compete for it. It was it was, it was definitely a letdown, but we had a great season. Had a lot a lot of fun throughout the season. Uh got a lot of relationships that I'm gonna last a lifetime. So I, and then, then I know, and I, I know that, that that was depressing and everything for me. But it's a lot of people losing a lot more because of the virus and because of so much. So you kind of got to put it in perspective. Absolutely. Um, another question I got for you was, um, how did Montverde prepare you for SEC play? That that's kind of a tough one, probably to answer because you haven't actually gotten into that SEC play yet. But but what's your opinion? Um, because what I. Uh, imagine the next level being like I can I can um, compare it to that because I know just just Coach Boyle playing under Coach Boyle and his mindset because he's done a lot of winning he's coached a lot of uh, a lot of SEC players a lot of NCAA players and just the just going through the scouting report I know how to I know a lot of terminology that he used that's a little advanced for our age and so just I know how to read a scouting report how to go over a scouting report because he's so thorough about every little detail so it's a lot of stuff like that. That I'm that I'm prepared with, and that's just off the court. Even on the court, I I feel like we play at a faster pace. That's a lot more. Um, that's that's a lot more like the next level. And then playing on a, playing on the winning team, playing on the team that we was on, is um, it, it teaches you how to how to mature and be able to sacrifice. And I feel like everybody has a role. So just having the ability to play your role and sacrifice to win and win games. So I feel like that was a great thing that we all had to learn, had to, had to grow up a little bit and 
I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you coach as well. What does, you know, coming from a, a team that was undefeated, uh, clearly you know how to win, you know, how, how does that translate then into coming in and taking your game to the next level? Well, I think that's one of the you know greatest attributes that Moses has is his ability to not just play and, and put up stats, but to win basketball games. He's been a part of a winning environment. And when you watched him play or you go to a practice and watch, there's no selfishness. It's all about the team. He's playing both ends of the floor. And um, certainly the talent level that, 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 that you played with, Moses, is, I mean, you played with a lot of Division One basketball players, and you guys all had to share the ball. And so I think he's coming into our program and is going to actually, instead of us teaching him, I think he's going to be able to play or teach a lot of guys on our, on our current roster. Absolutely. Um, Everyone watching, leave your questions below. We're going to keep getting back into those questions. One thing that I've seen about three or four times, Moses, people want to know how you are working out in quarantine. Um, What are you able to do? Um, um, You know, around the house, you're always able to do push-ups, and I got a pull-up bar so I can do those. Uh, My trainer brought me over like a a kettlebell and uh, RDL straps, so I can, that's a couple household things I can do, but I, get, I usually get out once a day and go around to the track. I got to work out with Bobby the other day. He uh, he let me come out there and work out with him. So we uh, got some cardio and just on the field running. So that's what that's what, what that was. was that so, like? What, tell me, what was that like? That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it was it was really good. Just um, he got to go out, got 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 to go through his workout plan. He um, he's definitely on another level. Just the way that <laughs> just, just the way that he's uh <laughs> his his mental. And then just those things he's he's able to do. I feel like I got I was I was able to keep up pretty well. But uh, yeah, he, he's definitely he definitely at the next level, and I can and just being able to see that and test myself against that was was positive. And I also go around the, go around the corner to the outside court and put shots up with my dad and brother. They rebound for me. And <laughs> who, uh, who wins in those horse games? He <laughs> said, "What? Who wins in those horse games? You, Miles, or Kareem?" Man, man, I, I got, I, I got to, I got to, I got to keep it real. It's been me. It's been me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't, we haven't played horse. I just get shots up and they rebound for me. <laughs> um, okay, we've gotten a lot of questions um, about your family. Are they excited that you're going to be now back in the state of Arkansas? Because you haven't been playing in Arkansas for some time now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're definitely excited. Uh, my mom pointed out the fact that I've been gone in my career for two years, so. That's another positive thing coming in with the virus and everything, just being able to come home and be around, be around my family because I haven't had the opportunity to do that in a while. And I, was, and I left home a lot earlier than anticipated. So just I've been really valuing this time at home. And then the fact that when I, when I leave, I'm not going 14 hours away back to Florida. I'm going to two hours away just up to, just to Fayetteville. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I see that you have you've got the night. You're you're already doing it right with the Nike. One of the oh, yeah. questions, and so I, I preface this question with: We are a Nike school. What's your favorite shoe to hoop in? Someone just sent that in, and I like that one. My favorite shoe to hoop in. I might have to say the Kyrie's. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know what? Our daughter asked us for those Kyrie's. <laughs> she, she didn't even play basketball, and she wanted the Kyrie's for Christmas. I'll tell you what, Moses. You can wear whatever kind of Nike shoe you want, man. Doesn't matter <laughs> oh, yeah. if it's Kyrie. Whatever you want, we're good with it. That's cool with me. <laughs> um, this has been coming in. You tell him what NBA player you compared him to, and then I want to hear who his favorite NBA player is. I, I, I brought up Clay Thompson because of the ability to play on both sides of the ball, but we'd like to know, Moses, who you think your game is most like. Who my game is most most like? Um, I, I've I've been compared to to Chris Middleton a lot, and then I can see I can see uh, Clay Thompson just with the being able to shoot and defend. My favorite player is Devin Booker, though. Uh, let's stick with this NBA. I got a question on my Twitter actually, and someone said, "How much did Coach Muss's NBA experience play into your commitment?" It definitely had a big factor, and just. Cause I, cause I heard, I found out about that, and before I actually got to know Coach, so that was more of his reputation. So that was a that was a big thing, attractive thing that I liked even before I met him, and uh, found other things that that I liked about him. But just having that NBA experience, cause you know that's a, that's the ultimate goal. That's where I want to be. So someone that's been to the mountaintop and able to come back and share knowledge, he has relationships. So I feel like you can't you can't learn if you're gonna learn from anybody, you might as well learn from the best. This has come in about four times. I don't know if you're watching. Everyone wants to know what number 
are you gonna wear? Um, I'm actually not a hundred percent sure. It's wait, you gotta put it right here. I thought it was put it right there. There you go. Oh yeah, that's cool with me. Yeah. What number did you wear at Mount Verd? I wore number two at Mount Verd. Does that is that something that means something to you, or it just ended up that kind of was a number that you fell into? And what is the number five? Uh, that's what I, that's what I heard, Moses. <laughs> wanted, but I have no idea. Yeah. Um. Well, at Mount Verd, I wore two actually because I number number three is my favorite number, but it's retired. D'Angelo Russell wore it. So then I so I took two, and then I know Desi's wearing number three this year. So then I, then that's my next favorite number five. Okay, there we go. I, I got a question for you, Moses. How often have you been able to talk, you know, to some of our guys, whether it's in group chats, whether it's, you know, the, the incoming freshmen or whether it's some of the existing guys? How, how, how much communication have you been able to have over the last 12 months with, with guys? Yeah, you know, I've been able to talk to Khalil, uh, Khalil Garland. That's, that's my guy. I've been playing with him for the longest. And then you know the incoming freshmen, we all have a group chat, so we've been we've been talking in there. So um, so I've been able to uh, build a relationship, and then I've talked I've talked to a couple guys that's been there. You know Desi and Isaiah, they both play with my brother coming up with the Arkansas Hawks. They play together, so I've already had a relationship with them. That's great. A lot of people asking about relationships, and also asking, do you have a favorite former hog? A favorite former hog. Um, I got, you know, I, I'm really, I'm close with Bobby. I really like Joe Johnson. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Patrick Beverly and his tenacity on defense. Definitely. So I, I have to probably say one of them. And then, and then Scotty Thurman. I like him a lot. It's funny because since he's from Little Rock, everyone already knows that he knows how to hog call. We had, we had uh, it was Vance from California, and everyone wanted to see the California kid do a hog call. But they, you're not getting that because they already know you know what's up. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, and let me add Ty Day to that last question, too. There we go. There we go. Um, of course, we're still some months away from the start of the season, but have you already started thinking what it's going to be like and have you kind of set goals maybe for yourself and for the entire team? I, I didn't hear that first part again. Can you say that again? I said, have you started really thinking about the season yet? I know we're some time away, months away, but have you set any goals for yourself and for the team this year? I mean, definitely. I, 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 won, I won a national championship. So I feel like that's. I feel like we're the team we have and the coaching staff we have. We're capable of doing that, just as capable as anybody else in the country. So I don't see why we can't. That's awesome. Um, people wanted how how much have you been to Fayetteville? Is another question I keep getting. Yeah, I've been up to Fayetteville to watch games. That's the main reason I come. I used to I used to play go up to the AAO facility. Yes. Yeah, I played with the team down there a couple of tournaments. So I spent some time down there. I have some family there too. AAO is about 1.5 miles from our house. <laughs> so we, I, I've spent some time at AAO there too. Um, and, oh, I like this question. What is your favorite part about the Arkansas fans? And you've seen a lot. These Arkansas have. fans have been talking about you for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have to say the, the support is consistent. It's, I, can, I can tell it's not going to go anywhere. And then I, like, I love the way that they treat the athletes after they leave the school it's still the same support as when it was there or when they were being recruited. So that's got to be my favorite. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you that question as well, because you have a, a great relationship with our fans that, you know, they sometimes give you some crap, but you can kind of laugh at that and you can kind of give it right back. And they seem to love it. I think we have the best crowd in the entire United States. And I know that uh, the crowd can't wait to see these guys play. I mean, I think that, you know, we built some really good momentum this year on the floor with how our guys played hard and we were in every game. But I also think during the course of the season um, that, that our incoming group gave us some momentum as well. I think that right now our crowd is uh, and our fan base is so excited uh, to watch this upcoming team. And we got a lot of work ahead of us, but certainly – you know, Moses, you bring so much to for, from an enthusiasm standpoint, being from Little Rock and, and, and Jalen being from Fort Smith and Devo being from Jacksonville. We're just building this momentum throughout the state and certainly uh, the impact that you guys have had, even though you haven't put on the uniform, 
has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think that excitement this season is just going to be next level. Is there a specific SEC game that you're kind of looking forward to that you might have circled on your calendar? A specific SEC game? Um, I might have to say, well, I feel like we, I feel like we're, we should be and we will be the best team in the SEC. Therefore, I feel like other teams should be looking forward to playing us. We, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to be the champs and everybody else is going to be the competitors. <laughs> Great answer. Um, someone just said, and I think you may have answered this, but have you ever played with or against Jalen is what someone asked. <laughs> um, I've actually been playing against Jalen since maybe the fourth or fifth grade, and I didn't even know that was him. I, I, he, played with the, he played with the Wizards when we, when we was young. Really, really, it was fourth grade. He played with the Wizards. Uh, and we had, and we had been playing. That was like our rival. They beat us a couple of times. We beat them, just going back and forth. And then we actually ended up getting a player from their team and played with us, JT. So he came and played with us. So that made them even more mad. So we have been going back and forth uh, ever since then. And then we came up, and I was playing at um, I was playing at North Little Rock, and he was played for Fort Smith. So we, you know, we played in the national. We played in the in the state tournament. He was actually he actually was sick during the tournament, but. So we played we played them then and I had a conversation with his dad and that's when I realized that Jalen was a big kid from the Wizards and I didn't even know. <laughs> that's cool. How how does that long history translate into team chemistry, you know, years and years later? I think the number one thing is these guys already know each other. Um they played against each other for a long time. They played with each other. Uh they've had group chats together. So I think from a camaraderie standpoint, um, they already know each other. And then obviously the new guys, we just need to pull them in and get them integrated as quickly as possible. But certainly the familiarity that these guys have with, with each other is just going to enhance all 13 of us as we come together as a unit. All right. And we are nearing the end of this. So if anyone has any more questions, um, I want you to ask because we're about to wrap this up. I did see one. It was kind of a non-basketball question. But do you have any idea what you might like to study at the University of Arkansas? I'm actually not 100% sure yet. I'm still talking to my family, talking to my parents, just uh, trying to figure out what, I'm, what I want to study. All right. And I have a question down here from us that I seem to get all the time. And they say, will you adopt them? <laughs> We've got some extra rooms in our house. <laughs> No. <laughs> Only good players will be adopted. <laughs> All right. Do you have any more questions for Moses? No. You know what, Moses? Uh, myself and the whole coaching staff, we couldn't be more excited to have you be part of our family. We can't wait to start coaching you and, and, uh, and to have a heck of a year, have a lot of fun this upcoming year and work hard. And I know that you're going to have an awesome career with us. And, and uh, welcome to the family. Definitely. Absolutely. I appreciate it. I want to add, well, I have one question I saw that I just like. Are you excited for the Little Rock game? I mean, what is that going to be like? How many ticket requests are you going to have for that one? Um, I'm going to have a lot, definitely. Because <laughs> I, I haven't played in Little Rock in I don't know how long. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one now. Well, so I'll say one thing. The, the game last year in Little Rock, the enthusiasm, it was off the charts. I mean, it was incredible. I, I had no idea – what to expect walking in there. And it was, it was one of the funnest games I've ever been a part of. So uh, yeah. it's only going to get louder with you in there. <laughs> yeah, that's a little rock for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Moses. We can't wait till you get to Fayetteville. Definitely. Thank you.